First a few words about the wing joining of the synapse, which after all is a flying wing, and this is the most challenging part, is to get this sweep out of ordinary straight arm and wings. This nose angle is 135 degrees, which is kind of a nice dimension for a lot of reasons. One, it gives a good mix between stability, which was increased by increasing the sweep angle, but it's a decent amount of efficiency, which is gotten by decreasing the sweep angle. Incidentally, th this angle is 45 degrees, and so that the sweep angle for each wing is 22 and a half degrees. In this version of the Synapse wing, you'll be starting with a stock 9-inch total cord arm and wing. So that's a 7-inch airfoil cord and a 2-inch control surface. It can be with the control surface already made, or it can be a raw blank where you have not c cut the control surface yet. This is a three thickness former. You may have made this with a spar channel, although it is not needed. This can be three solid formers from top to bottom. Be sure to remove the paper from the upper surface of the upper former, and of course from the inside of the upper surface of the wing, from this point all the way across to at least here, if not the whole thing. Lately, I've recommended removing the paper only to here as only this portion of the wing is curved and cambered. From this point back it's actually very straight so it's nice to have paper on the bottom as well as the upper surface of the control surface and even this portion of the wing gives it a little bit more rigidity. The easy part of this method is cutting the wing root and tips off accordingly. The hard part is threading in the spar. Here is the wing root of the synapse pre-cut. You'll notice that it is full length at the leading edge and material is removed from the trailing edge so that will lend the sweep to it. And so since this is a right triangle it's easy to do the trigonometry here. Actually you don't need all of these dimensions. Really what you need to know is this 4 inch is removed from the trailing edge at the root right up to the very tip. Don't be fooled into doing it to the color transition. Make sure the cut is taken right to the very point of the physical leading edge of the wing. Incidentally, the hypotenuse here, the long side, is about 10 inches, just a tiny bit shorter. And these angles are 66 degrees and 24 degrees. Now to cut this off, the options vary. I've just used a utility knife with making several passes. You could use a bread knife, a radial arm saw, or a miter saw would work very well too or just a very sharp, very long knife to cut through here. Now on the one hand, it's tempting to cut through the bottom surface because you do have a nice straight line there. A more precise way to cut it would be to translate this mark to the upper surface of the trailing edge of the wing. The problem is, of course, how do you put a straight edge against that? Well, you really don't. What I recommend is using a string or even a piece of removable tape like this masking tape and start at your leading edge and just kind of trial and error it until you get it to lay down. Then once you've got it straight across from the physical leading edge back to the 4 inch mark, then you can make your cut with a utility knife, a nice sharp long blade of a knife, or if you have a radial arm saw or a miter saw, particularly with a laser sight, you can make an amazingly quick, sharp, straight line right across there. Here is the tip of the synapse wing with the reciprocal layout as the root. So instead of removing material from the trailing edge, we'll be removing material from the leading edge. Four inches here. This is a nine inch cord. This is about 10 inches. And again, 24 degrees, 66 degrees, and 90 degrees right angle there. Repeat this exact same procedure as done at the root. And then do that for your second wing, taking care that you remove the correct wing root so you don't end up with two left or two right wings. So I've cut the opposite wing root and tip as well and taped the two wings together with the physical leading edge of both wings aligned. The color rarely will line up perfectly. On this wing you'll notice that I've removed the control surface at the center. On this side I've not even finished the control surface. That's just to illustrate that you can place the spar in either state but do be sure that you finish this control surface before you actually join the wing roots. So these carbon aero spars are commonly available in 30 to 32 inch lengths. This one is 7.5 millimeters in diameter. 
they come in down to about five millimeters. And the best place to locate them is right up to the leading edge, traversing the wing root about one inch forward of the trailing edge of the actual airfoil, and then back to the leading edge there. Whether you choose to make your spar permanent or removable, this is the proper location. So go ahead and tape that down in that location with your wing roots aligned and mark here at the root, which is where you'll get your alignment marks to place the spar inside the channel, and also mark the tip right here. Here you'll see I've marked the path of the spar through the wing root transition, and at the tip, mark from the actual extent of the spar to where it would exit. If you can imagine this protruding laterally, it would actually not come out of the wing at its length, but it would come out obliquely, so to over here. This is particularly important to make this mark for removable spar models, as the hole will need to start here, but end far over here. Now comes the tricky part of threading this spar, carbon arrow shaft or dowel, from this point to this point through your wing formers. Now there's many ways to do this. This is just one way that's worked well for me. We're going to be aiming for the lower former here in the actual substance of the foam between the two layers of paper. Inevitably some of that paper is going to get torn up but as much as we can minimize it and definitely avoid penetrating the bottom surface of the wing you'll come up with a, a good final product. The way I've chosen to do this is to borrow a technique from vascular and neurologic surgeons which is to use a guide wire technique. That is to take a very thin sharp um, metal like push rod or music wire um, this is actually a push rod that I'm repurposing and use that to make the actual path of the spar then you thread the actual thicker blunter spar over the, the guide wire in the desired trajectory. So what I'm going to do is plan out that trajectory or path of the guide wire like this and I'm going to insert it in the leading edge of the wing and sight it with my eye and aim it down towards the exit point here using the part of the wire that's actually sticking out of the wing to help me determine if, it, if I'm pointing too far back, too far forward. And as you first insert it, you can feel it tracking against the inner surface of the lower surface of the wing. You can feel it kind of sliding around. And once it goes back and begins to engage the foam right about here, you'll feel it meet resistance as it starts to cut through the foam. Watch this carefully for bubbling up, which would indicate that the guide wire is coming up towards the lower surface of the wing that's facing you. So if I push that through, hopefully we'll feel it exit the foam on the opposite side. And you'll see that it's exited pretty close to my mark here. Now since this space is empty from about here to here, there is a little bit of wiggle room right there. So now that that guide wire is in place, we'll be able to thread the spar back over it. A recommended variation of this is to actually not use the spar itself uh, as the carbon fiber arrow shaft can split along the edges as it cores through the foam. If in fact you have a metal arrow or a piece of pipe of a similar diameter, I recommend using that for this procedure, but I'll go ahead and show you using a carbon arrow shaft. Here I've covered the tip of my carbon arrow shaft with some packing tape. It can also help to apply a little CA glue along the end to preserve the tip from fraying or again ideally use a metal arrow. And then what we do is backload that over the guide wire like this. Put it roughly in place where it's going to rest between those marks and then we're going to follow that guide wire all the way through the foam to where it exits there. Just by gently pushing and twisting it watching for signs of bubbling or deformation right here. Now with gentle twisting and pushing, if you're lucky, the spar will just come right out the leading edge, but more likely it'll kind of jam up and gall out and you won't be able to proceed any further. So just simply remove it and then come at it from the other direction. Feed it over the guide wire. And having cut that rectangle on the leading edge of the wing, just follow the guide wire into the leading edge surface and cut at the foam from the other direction following the guide wire until it breaks through. And once it breaks through you'll see a little core of foam and paper usually 
inside the shaft. And then you can just simply remove your guide wire, pull your spar into the proper position, even with the leading edge right there, and then can repeat the same operation with the opposite wing. Now due to the tight space back here, the spar actually belongs right about here. You're going to find that the foam tends to want to push it forward like that. You can put a little dab of glue if you like in the finished product. You can hollow out the foam a little bit or you can actually just hold the spar in place and kind of gently massage the foam down so that it conforms better and it's less apt to force that forward. Nonetheless, there's going to always be a little bit of tension somewhere. Once you tape the two roots of the wing together, uh, that will be a non-issue. Here's the same procedure with the opposite wing. So I'm going to be aiming at the root mark from the leading edge mark. Again, inserting the wire just one and a half thicknesses up from the lower surface that will get into the middle of this lower former foam substance itself and try to avoid the paper. But if it isn't where you want it to be, you can always back this out and retrack it again. This shows the guide wire inserted in the leading edge and successfully tracked to the exact right spot on the root. And you can look down in there and kind of see where the track of the spar will eventually be through this lower former over the guide wire. Here's the spar now placed in the second wing. There's the core of foam. Remove the guide wire. Place the spar into its central position. If you do need to remove the spar for whatever reason, for example, to core out your opposite wing, you can just reinsert a safety wire like this, leave that in the tract, and then pull out the spar. That will leave the wire in place in its tract and you can follow it back over with the spar. Like that. And then again, just take out your wire like that. Now it's time to join the wing halves together. At this point, you will definitely want to finish the control surfaces and cut this part off as it becomes more difficult once the wings are joined. If you're using a permanent spar section, you can simply thread the opposite wing onto the spar, tape it up at the root, and be done. If you're going to use a removable spar and you can get your hands on a different diameter of spar, this is a 5mm carbon aero shaft that fits nicely inside a 7.5mm aero shaft, or you can use metal outer and carbon inner, or you could use carbon or metal outer and a wooden dowel in the center, whatever you like. But in any case, this slides in and out much easier than this will slide into here for repeated breaking down and setting up of this wing. So that's just one consideration. So I've got my spar on this side, safety wire on this side. I'm just going to thread that into the spar so that it tracks correctly into this wing. And then push those together. And there will be a little disparity inevitably you can just simply squish that into place like that and then join your wings up according to the following video.